it's a trust issue. Google knows that you know most businesses go to business and don't last more than twelve months. So when a new website pops up, they're hesitant to send anyone there until it's proven that it's going to be around for a while. It gets its authority up, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yes. So we use domain authority. We talk about that a lot. We use Moz just like him. I think you were using that a little bit for mm -hmm. in your previous position. There's roughly eight or nine different factors that go into ranking for every any given site. There's an article on the Kook site that if you just search for Kook SEO rankings or whatever, you can sort of see our given philosophy for all that. But in general, it's like I said, it's about eight different factors, and in general, it's content on the site, code on the site, and how fast the site works. Um, sorry, that's three. Um, um, offline advertising, br branding in general, like if you're um, um, you know, more radio ads, more mentions like that, that brings more direct traffic and Google notices that as well. Um, uh, back backlinks, as long as they're good quality backlinks, mm -hmm. yep. are still relevant? That's a big one. Um, social is a huge thing, yes. so the more mentions you have on social, um, basically they look at, Google essentially looks at, they do review some metrics beyond just what they can see on a website through analytics, but the vast majority of it is looking at every different channel of traffic to a, to a given website on in Google Analytics, and your traffic channels are, you know, paid advert, uh, you got paid search, um, social, display, direct, organic search, um, referral, so they look at all that and they, and they make assumptions about that um, and the, you know when they see a big spike in direct they say oh well shit this is getting obviously people are hearing about this somewhere so we need to rank them up higher for organic as a result and that actually improves organic so those are all things that go into um, how bounce, that all rates. Bounce rate as well bounce the rate, yep. is really important um, you know it doesn't matter how much traffic they're sending there if, uh, if people are leaving after 10 seconds they'll stop sending traffic. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important on any given site, especially on single page sites or on sites where there's a convert where there's a, poss a conversion possibility on the existing on the landing page, is mm -hmm. you want to have event tracking set up in there. Because anytime if you go to a website, like if I open up this website right here and I don't click anything on here and I don't go to any site and I back back out or I close it, that's a bounce. Yeah. If I go in here though and I click, let's say they have a phone number up here. And I click so this, goal. that can, t if you've set that up with event tracking, which this should be, so when I click that, it sends this to analytics, this event right here. So on click, Google Analytics, send event, and then these labels and everything like that. Google says, oh, that wasn't a bounce, that somebody's engaged with this page. Mm -hmm. And even if you close that out, even if you do that in seconds, that counts as a, as a conversion. Google doesn't count that as a bounce. They see that as a quality visit. Yeah. And they rank the site accordingly. Okay, that's how half price car rentals. So the good the good folks over at car rent .com .au. Um Tracy is the manager over there, the new owner, and new he's been there for a year and a half now, but he's new to me, is um John. John something or other, I don't remember. Um really nice people. Um, not at all tech savvy at all when it comes to this. They're very trusting about SEO, so much to the point that even when we tell them, don't do SEO anymore, they keep wanting to do it. <laughs> so, a lot of clients, and even after I try to explain this to them, I don't know if you have the same experience, I find that a lot of clients mix up SEO and hosting. Mm -hmm. And they actually, when we talk, when we say we're doing SEO for them, they think it's a requirement for a website. Like, if you don't do SEO, your site won't appear online at all. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't had that, but I've definitely yeah. had the mixing up, you know, paid advertising. And That's a big one. SEO, Everybody, yeah. yeah. Mark Stitt does they that. They don't know where the, the boundary is between the two. Mark Stitt called me up. He was in New Zealand, so he's the Fit College CEO, and he called me up um, just the other day. He said, I'm here with the New Zealand campus. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. I want you to start doing SEO for them. What he was talking about was paid advertising. Uh, okay. So a lot of them use SEO as this catchphrase for everything digital with the website. <laughs> I'm not here to be pedantic. I mean, that's funny that he prefaced that with they don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just funny that just Google SEO. You'll know in two seconds what SEO. 
Um, okay, <laughs> this is a once-off project, so ignore that. Um, that is social media management, so we'll skip that. Social media management. Okay, energy, which you've had a little bit of experience here with. Um, so we do a monthly SEO for energy, which originally was supposed to get billed every month. And between you, me, and the wall, and everybody else in this office who all knows this, it's not actually being invoiced right now. The guys are using it. Kook is a partner in energy. Um, so you've been on the energy website or anything like that, as in addition to experiencing their delicious meals? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So the site, just to give you a quick backstory on this, um, just because I, if we're doing SEO, this is going to be important. Um, when they originally came to us, essentially they were forming this business partnership together. Coop got in early on it. Mm -hmm. But by the time Coop came in, they'd already, the, the original business owners who were part of um, Anytime Fitness had basically gone to this marketing company in England called Bloom and got them to do a whole brand um, package for this new thing called Energy, which is already a stupid name to start with. What's up with um, that? Where did that name come from? I don't know. To me, it's like I'm getting Japanese cuisine or something. Well, it's supposed to be en energy. Energy. Energy, yeah. It's supposed to be energy, but with chi. Oh, is so that what you're saying? So life balance. Oh, yes. It just looks yes. like a sushi. It's, very, a sushi it's supposed to be spiritual. Food. No, it looks <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> That's supposed to be a fork. I mean, there's all, we have a, if you want, if you're, if you're ever interested in all, we have a whole um, visual package thing oh, that explains oh, all yeah, this the from Bloom. The they spent a lot of money on putting that together, too. He's going with actual energy. So they, <laughs> so Bloom did all the, everything you see here, all the images, all the images, all the, um, all the colors, all the, this swirl thing, this kind of weird, weird <laughs> so thing or whatever. This is all Bloom. We, so they came in. The guys took one look at that. Lindsay took one look at that and said, "We don't want to go. We want to. This is the direction we want to go." And they started going in that direction. The, the client knew about it, and they got this site together and they launched the site. But the site, nothing was delivering yet. So we were, we had the site launched. We were doing some push to get some traffic for it. This is back in like October and November of last year. Mm -hmm. They were they wanted to get a certain number of subscribers before they committed to producing the food. Okay. Nothing ever mashed up with that, so they never made any food yet. As a result, they never got any subscribers, and it was really, because you go to the site, and it's like, we'll deliver in like five weeks or something like that, or five whatever years, it is. Yeah, that? exactly. <laughs> so nobody would commit to something like that. Not to mention the, the price hurdle, which... Uh, there were... Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's actually been, priced it, okay, but... Now it is. Yeah. Like well, it's... The mm -hmm. I think the original... I don't what think the, the pricing's the actually gone up. It's not... 150 starts out. Is that... This is... Um, for the first quarter. Right, it's a, it was a promotional deal, which I think is actually ending soon. So the, the so this is what the prices are, uh, and for a little while I think oh it, there was a period where the this was this was two twenty per month, and I think the active was was a little bit more than that or whatever. But yeah, so sustain is. Um, I think sustain uh, the active is two twenty. Active is two nineteen per yeah. per fortnight now, and this is. But there, I think there was a period where this was actually a little bit higher. I, mean, I don't, I don't remember. I think they still have plans of pushing those prices up fairly soon as well. Yeah. I think it's a good price. I mean, I, for all the food you get and everything like that, I was yeah, saying, now yeah, that, actually now like that it, we've so. seen eat that much. Yes. Now <laughs> that we've seen it, but when, it, when you don't, you're, yeah, yeah. That's when we'd only seen the website a couple of months ago. We were like. Wow. It's like I'm just thinking when I get Caveman Kitchen, their lowest option was 75 a week delivered straight to my door, and that was five um, meals that were probably a little bit bigger than that one, but mm -hmm. five main meals, and that was plenty for me. And if that's all you're looking for, yeah, I think maybe they should have You know, having an, option option for, for having an option for maybe one meal a day, but the whole, pro the whole purpose of this is supposed to be a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a balanced diet, you really need to, you're talking three meals and snacks. Anyways, we're not talking about business model for all this. <laughs> getting off track. Okay, getting off track there. From an SEO perspective, what we need to be doing is working on ways to improve the conversion rate on this site. That's the number one priority. So to finish the backstory here, basically, we Lindsay created a site. Glenn spent his heart and soul in, in doing the content for that site. It launched... It didn't catch fire right away for a variety of reasons, which had nothing to do with the site itself. Mm -hmm. um, and the other major players in energy, who are the, the head of uh, Anytime Fitness, and Kristen Beck, who's the nutritionist, she has a, a part in the company too. They basically said, I don't want to say they panicked, but they said, no, 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 revert the site back to exactly what Bloom wanted it to be in the first place, which Lindsay did, and the team did, um, and simplify the content and all these other things. Mm -hmm. 
Anyways, that's the site that we have here right now. So it is sort of a, a mash of things that nobody really has ownership of okay. when it comes down to that. But it's improving, it's better, and the SEO program should really be used to find ways to further improve it. Find what works and find what doesn't. Could you also write, in your note for energy, write page speed? Page speed oh, is appalling at the moment. Um, and uh, look, it's a complicated website and we've done a lot of things with it that we, you know, a lot of custom development, but there's a lot that can be done for page speed. Um, a lot of it appears to be some codings and all the emails that go back and forth. Yeah. Mm. It's a lot of um, the JavaScript packaging or whatever you yeah. yeah. Well, it's bringing in an uncompressed version of something called jQuery UI, mm -hmm. which I can't see any reason why jQuery UI would be needed on the site at all. And that's 80, 80K, that's 80 kilobytes that's been brought in every page. So, so Leslie, for something like that, your role in this is to keep doing page speed scores for the site mm -hmm. when it's bad, to then talk to, to Carl about, okay, what do we do to fix this? In yeah. which case, Carl will then direct that to whether it needs to go to COGS or whether it's something that's just, if it's just images, and you can see it yourself, when you go to page speed for any site, <clears throat> so page speed is under, it's the developers.google.com. This is definitely something, so page speed tools insights is what it's called. You're gonna wanna you go to this site on a regular basis. We also have this linked in to our Swido reports for every, every client. When you go in here and you click analyze, it'll tell you the top reason, it'll tell you the scores and it'll tell you the top challenges that, that need to be fixed for the scores to get better. Mm -hmm. If you see in, and it breaks it down by high priority items, medium priority items. Um, and they keep optimizing, ooh, this is all new. This thing's cool. It is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that even is. FCP, DCL, I don't know. Okay, so, so that's the just basis. They've broken down um, into percentages. The percentage of the site that loads quickly, medium, and slowly. Sixty-two percent of loads on this page have a slow first content or paint. Oh, that's so. This is a brand new interface. I've never seen this before. Anyways, so you can see a different score on desktop and mobile. And on desktop, it's scoring eighty-three out of one hundred, which is great. You don't need to do anything with that. And, most and on mobile, it's connected. still some some challenges here. Someone must have done something with my last email because they have improved. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go down here, you can see optimization suggestions, and generally, it lists here the the major problems. So if you see anything in here that images uh, image size mm -hmm. is a problem, that's an easy fix. And Carl even has a he has a wiki. We have a wiki. Carl has a um, wrote a wiki on it too on on how to optimize that. I think he's reviewed that with you as well on on um, how to optimize images for page speed. Did you guys um, go over that? I'm not sure. So basically, we touched on it briefly with, um, but you don't have Photoshop in your machine yet. That was the that was the uh, limiting yes, factor. Okay. I emailed Lindsay about getting into it. Um, so definitely, we'll need to follow up on that because eventually, I'd like this to be something that you can do. It's an easy task, something that a developer does not need to spend their time doing, and it's a big win. So just optimizing, just taking an image and just getting it down to as low a resolution as possible that it looks good, but it it's as light as possible. Yeah. Um, I'll add to that as well. Browser caching, about the fourth one down, is really quite easy once you get to know how to do it as well. Oh, good. Okay. So that's something if you can learn that too, that's great. Browser caching, although also can have side effects of with with. Um, QC problems where menus can break and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So anytime you do anything like that, whatever Carl shows you any of that, the big thing is going back to the site, refreshing it, and checking that everything that nothing broke because mm -hmm. that's a side effect of, of doing a lot of those. So, but the, for the the majority of this stuff though, this is like a developer would need to fix this. But it's your it's your job to to go through, identify the problem, and be able to push this to the different um, the different resources we have here to be able to.